Hello curious people, in this video I will be talking about the Pythagorean Theorem. The Pythagorean Theorem is something every student has encountered. It states that the sum of the squares on the legs of a right triangle is equal to the square on the hypotenuse, the side opposite to the right angle. We don't all completely understand where it comes from. In this video, I will prove the Pythagorean Theorem in two different ways, and hopefully, by the end of it, you will be able to understand where this infamous formula comes from. We will look at it as a very simple proof that focuses on areas. We start off with a right-angle triangle with side lengths A, B, and C, where C is the hypotenuse, or in different terms, the longest side of the triangle. We then add three more triangles and organize them as seen on your screens. This configuration of all four shapes creates two squares, the small one shaded in red on your screens with side lengths equal to C, and the larger one shaded in blue with side lengths equal to A plus B. Now let's try and find the areas of all shapes in the configuration, including the four triangles. The area of all four triangles is 4 times 1 half AB, which simplifies to 2 AB. The area of the big square has an area of A plus B squared. Expanding the brackets gives us A squared plus 2 AB plus B squared. And finally, the area of the small square is C times C, which is C squared. Notice that the area of the big square is equal to the area of the smaller square plus the four triangles. Algebraically, it looks like this. With some simple middle school algebra, we get the final result of A squared plus B squared equals C squared. A more interesting proof is the semicircle and Thales triangle theorem. First, we need a circle. Then we're going to add a right triangle to this circle. This triangle will have a side length equal to the radius of the circle. Then we will make a line that is perpendicular to the diameter of the circle, forming that right angle. We can label the sides of the right angle A, B, and call the hypotenuse C. We can create two lines starting from the top vertex of a right angle and extend it to each endpoint of the diameter to create two other triangles. We can see on the left triangle that it has two side lengths of length C or the radius, making this an isosceles triangle. This means it has two of the same angles, which we will call X. Since we have two angles which we know about, we can use both of them to find the third one by subtracting them from 180. Doing this, we get the following, 180 minus 2x. Using supplementary angles, we'll find that this angle on the blue triangle is equal to 2x. Now that we know two angles, 90 and 2x, we can subtract them from 180 to get 90 minus 2x. Looking at the top vertex, we know that this angle is 90 degrees, so a right angle, and it's known because of Thales' theorem. And adding all angles at the top vertex should give us 90, making this angle equal to x. We know two angles in the red triangle, so to find the third one, we repeat the same process as on previous triangles, to end up with 90 minus x. We found some side lengths and some angles, we need to find how we can relate this to the Pythagorean theorem, which is a squared plus b squared equals c squared. The trick for doing this is looking at these three triangles as two, and that's just what we're going to do. Now we have this big triangle in pink and this little triangle in red. These two triangles are actually similar triangles and can be proven by looking at the angle measurements. Both are right angle triangles with an angle x and 90 minus x. Since all angles on both triangles are the same, they are similar, not turn width because the side lengths could be different. Knowing this, we can set up a proportion of the corresponding sides. Which in our case looks like c plus a over b is equal to b over c minus a. We can do some algebra to see what we end up with. You guessed it, the Pythagorean theorem. That's it for today, thank you for watching and go study.